going to go to Biplane. We're still in 1976. This is Biplane 4 from 1976. I'm guessing 4 is for 4 players. Let's see what we have with the artwork. So, from Fun Games Incorporated, new 4 player action. Take all maneuverability, new color monitor, uh, two green and two red aircraft, realistic sound effects. Rugged, fully tested. Okay, looks good, looks good. There's the example of the arcade cabinet. <laughs> you have to fit all four people around <laughs> the two joysticks. Uh, it looks, I'm taking a guess, but it looks like it's taking the concept of Ace and making it so it's four players can play at the same time. Let's see if we get more info from the manual. So here's Biplane from 1976. You can see the instruction manual, January 1976, at least when the manual was made. Uh, this is, looks like it's not going to give us any info on game, just how to set up the arcade cabinet. All right, uh, I've got to give it zero because it doesn't work. Sorry, by playing four. All right, now, moving on to Breakout, 1976. This is uh, Namco? I thought it was also Atari, but maybe it was d distributed by someone, uh, two different people. Uh, let's see what we got. Breakout. One or two players. Standard three ball operator adjustable to five balls. Extended play option, color overlays, and sound effects. Bust out of the ordinary. High profit potential is built in. Players can compete for points against an opponent or against them. Uh, the... <laughs> So they're, they're actually doing a slight story on this. You're breaking out of prison. So that's what breakout means. The jailbreak caper. Eight rows of bricks, two rows. Players get three balls to try to knock down as many bricks as possible, ricocheting against the wall. And it can be adjusted for how many balls or extended play you want. There's an example of the arcade cabinet. Uh, pretty simple. We're using, um, actually, what's the... It's a trackball. You have to uh, get the your dial back and forth. Now the original breakout uh, used transistor to transistor logic. So we are not able to play it. Uh, it's sadly was, uh, had to be played with a simulator, the actual original one. So there you go, yeah, Atari. So it looks like Namco distributed probably in Japan is my guess, but uh, originally made by Atari. So there's breakout, this is the summary of gameplay. Physical description, that's what it looks like. Breakout is a ball and plow paddle game which a player's objective is to build up the highest possible point score hitting balls toward a wall of bricks. Each time the ball hits a brick, points are added to the player's score. Then the brick disappears and the ball rebounds. Bricks at the rear wall are worth more points than those at the front. Player accumulated scores are displayed continuously on the TV screen. Besides rebounding from bricks from the player's paddle, the ball will also rebound on the side wall and bounce back. Wow, there's so much instruction for a game that is just bouncing off the wall and breaking the bricks. It talks about how the score works. I guess if no one had seen this before, I, well, you got the idea. If you saw it in the arcade, you would you would understand how it works. But you, do you need five paragraphs to explain <laughs> what Breakout is? I guess you do. Right, I'd love to get this one more because of how influential it is, but we will see this copied several times on home computers and consoles so uh, we'll still we got to give it zero stars since we cannot play it sorry breakout it's a good one all right let's move on to nd4 this is uh, 1976 the sequel to nd800 not uh, related to it well it's it is the same game but they just broke it down so you're playing with four people now uh, let's take a look at some of the artwork on nd4 Yep, one to four player. That's what the four stands for. Four different colored race cars. To get different colors and program that into the game was a big deal back then because the majority of these were still black and white, even in 1976. So there's an example of the arcade cabinet. Two people on each side using the pedals and then the, the wheel to steer. And then there's an example of what the game looks like. So let's see if the manual tells us anything. The operation service manual for Indy 4. Looks like this is, yeah, this is just for setting up the system for the first time. But there you go, copyright 1976, Atari. All right, let's see if Indy 4 works for us. We're now on May 17th, 1976, playing every video game. 
or at least checking it out. And this one's another one that you gotta have the simulator for. It uses uh, transistor to transistor logic. So gonna give this one zero. Sorry, Indy four. All right, now we're up to Tornado Baseball, 1976. Playing every game in order. Let's check out some of the images. This is the advertisement flyer from Midway. Live action baseball. Would this be the first baseball game we've seen? I think so. Yep, two-player video game. Players can make double plays, errors, double coin shoots. And there's an example of what the game looked like. And you see all the color there. The color's not coming from the game. The game is only processing black and white, and they put in the cabinet different colored overlays to make it look better. And it uh, looks like the controls are just a joystick and then a single button. Yeah, there you go. There's a control panel. So you have... Um, oh, okay. So uh, one person's playing when they're pitching. They use the joystick. And then uh, when, when they're batting, they use the, uh, the button to swing the ball. There we go. So it looks like, yeah, we got the hit, outfield, left field. So three buttons to use. And then uh, what kind of pitches you can do. Yeah, there's the example of what the computer is processing, just the black and white characters. All right, let's see if the manual gives us more. Midway's Ballpark, which was another name for it in other areas, but Tornado Baseball, Ballpark, same thing. Uh, let's see, instructions. Oh, it's just the in installation setup. Equipment panel. If you have problems with uh, the sound system where the crowd noise and the home run siren isn't working, then I'll love it. I wonder if we're gonna get all the sound effects when we play. All right, let's check out Tornado Baseball. June 5th, 1976, on the arcade. There we go. So this emulator is giving us all the artwork of what it looked like to play Tornado Baseball, even with the dials down the bottom showing the score and the ball. All right, let's give this a shot and see if this works. So I put a coin in, and it looks like the visitor's up. So I'm ready to play. Looks like I got uh, buttons for the outfield. Yeah, I can move the outfield back and forth. And uh, th this game has to be played with two players. So I just pitch the ball. I can, I'm using the joystick to, to decide how I want to move in the joystick to determine what kind of um, a pitch I want, but I have to have a second player because that person is going to swing the bat. They don't have artificial intelligence programmed in to play me, but you would swing the ball and then, and then play the game. That's pretty good for a baseball game. All right, I'm digging it. We're doing above average at the time. That's pretty good. All right, moving on to Cobra Gunship. 1976 in the arcade, uh, playing every video game in order of release. Let's go and check out the artwork. This is the advertisement flyer. That's pretty good. It's not Atari either. This is a company called Meadows. Featuring authentic controls, realistic targets, one or two players, attractive graphics, super accessible cabinet, and two coin slots. That was big. More money you get in, the better. There's the arcade cabinet. Yeah, they're doing similar to Tornado Baseball. The game itself is only doing black and white, but they put overlays of color in front of it. Yeah, there's an example of what it looked like. And this game, uh, that's all I got, is that one picture for the artwork. This does not uh, run. We have to have a simulator to run this one. So zero stars for Cobra Gunship. All right, let's move on to Cops and Robbers. 1976, this one, uh, two people play at the same time. One person's the cop, one person's the robber. Let's take a look at the artwork for this one. Cops and robbers. One, two, three, or four player action. Oh, two good guys, two bad guys. So you can play four. Yeah, you can see the four joysticks. Reflected playful image and graphics provide more realistic depth. The game is not providing the depth. The arcade cabinet is. Uh, I wonder if the um, a Tommy gun comes with the system. No, it doesn't. Colored cars and beer truck. Beer truck. Love it, 1976. There's an example of the arcade cabinet. You have the pedals down the bottom to control the car. There you go. Four players. Looks like we just got uh, the gas for the car and fire for controls. 25 cents per player. Nice. Let's see what the manual has for us. 
Cops and robbers from Atari. The operations service manual and warranty. Let's see. Okay, summary of gameplay. That's what I want to see. There's troubleshoot and repair. So the arcade campus are now giving physical descriptions of what it is. So uh, this is all new. A video game arcade cabinet was different than a pinball cabinet. So they describe in detail the actual description of the, the system itself. And there's you can see the, the, uh, the all the dimensions of the cabinet, how it's supposed to be, uh, how it's supposed to look whenever you're finished setting it up. And then there's your summary of gameplay. In Cops and Robbers, the players drive cars along parallel double lane roadways that appear on each side of the TV picture. The players see the cops in either one or two cars on the left, and robbers also in either one or two cars on the right. Each player controls one car, and each car has a machine gun barrel that protrudes from the side, pointing at the opponents. The objective of the game is to build up score points by shooting bullets into the opponent cars. By pushing their uh, his or her gun control lever back and forth, they can cause the gun barrel in the car to swing one of seven angular positions, all point in the direction of the opponents. By squeezing the trigger located at the top of the gun control lever, the player causes bullets to be fired from the gun's barrel. S stepping all the way down, the gas pedal causes the player on that car to move upward along the roadway from the bottom of the pitcher toward the top. And by releasing the gas pedal, a player causes that car to drop back toward the bottom pitcher. Uh, okay. A bullet hitting a car causes that car to roll into a, a skid screech motion followed by a crash motion. And you get one point for each hit made on the opponent's car. Wow. Very detailed description of how to play. So cool, man. So cool. Okay, uh, let's see if it works. We're on July 1976. Cops and Robbers from Atari in the arcade. There we go. So this is including all the artwork that was uh, for Cops and Robbers. Let's see if there's any different views we can check out. Let's see. We got the upright and we have uh, just the overlay. Now, the, the game was only uh, black and white. The overlay was in color. So they put something over to make it blue and yellow on each side. And we're totally doing this one. That's the way to go. All right, let's put some money in. There's my 25 cents. Oh, we need more players. See if it starts for us. Go back here. Switch it out. This machine's... Oh, yeah, you need all four. Okay, so we'll try this then. Put... Uh... When car hits, step on gas pedal. So, uh, okay, yep. Yeah. So I'm only controlling one of the four cars. So I'm pushing on my gas pedal, and I got a gun I can shoot on the side. And then I can angle my uh, uh, car back and forth. It looks like they're sending uh, beer trucks in between us. Shoot the beer! Shoot the beer! Oh, okay, and it bounces off the side. Okay, so I got one car, and it shows... Uh, I'm playing as the part of the robber on the right side. So the... Oh man, it's pretty cool that the, the gun has a really good range of the angle that you can shoot. But after I shoot both of them, I don't think it comes back because you have to have all four people. There is no computer or, or AI that controls them. So, uh, how do they come back? Hello? You still with me? Hello? No? Yeah. If you don't have enough, or you don't have uh, other people to play, then the game just keeps going until the time runs out. So it was it was really good because you could play with four people at the same time and it would give the arcade lots of money. If only I had four people to play with. If only. That's pretty cool. So uh, this one is above average because it's kind of blending a few things together. So we'll, we'll give this one three and a half stars. Love it. Okay, moving on to Flyball, 1976 on the arcade. Another baseball game. How does it stack up compared to Tornado Baseball? Let's see what the images look like. Here's the advertisement flyer from Atari. So this is Atari's baseball game. Two-player action, realistic play and tactics. Bunts, balls, and strikes. More realistic, high-volume sound effects. I don't remember any sound effects before, but we didn't have a batter to bat, so who knows? 
All right, let's see what the manual looks like. This is the operation and service manual for, let's see the summary of gameplay. There's the physical description of the game. Uh, uh, baseball video action game is how they described it in 1976. Summary of gameplay. A player's objective in fly ball is the same as that in a real baseball game to score more runs than the opponent. Just as in the real game, every uh, ball pitch will turn to be a strike, a ball, or a hit. Okay, so it's it's the description is just how to play baseball, basically. We got it. We got it. Let's see if fly ball works for us. So we're still July of uh, 1976. This is fly ball in the arcade from Atari. Ah, okay, so the emulator is emulating the, the same as Tornado Baseball, but we don't have all the cool overlays and color. So we're only getting what the game had or the, the what the computer was programmed to do. All right, let's put some money in. 25 cents, we got one coin. All right, uh, let's see, batter and pitcher. So it looks like I'm the batter. And I can move my bat back and forth. Wow, it really doesn't look like you're doing a full swing there, buddy. You're just getting part of it. And uh, this is another game you have to have two people. So the pitcher would pitch to me and then I would hit the ball. But if you don't have two people, that's it. Still pretty good. I didn't see any other players on the screen like uh, Tornado Baseball. So let's give this one... This will be below... Average, we're going to give this one two stars for fly ball. All right, still in 1976, this is uh, 280 Zap, which I really want to know how you pronounce that one. 280 Zap. Let's check out the artwork for 280 Zap. Thrilling action matches skills against tight bins, fast straights, S curves and more for real driving excitement from Midway. Another upright arcade cabinet with gas pedal to drive and then wheel to steer. This one has the gear shifter too on it. That's cool. There's an the example of the control board or the control panel. And then um, looks like this one uses a analog uh, for the wheel turning at least. Yeah, so there's the example of what the computer uh, is programmed to do. Uh, no manual for this one. Let's check out 280 Zap. We're in uh, September of 1976. This is uh, Midway. Oh, cool. So this emulator got us the artwork for the cabinet. We got the marquee at the top, and then what you would see if you're playing it. Even the shifter uh, down on the right side. That's pretty cool. Instructions, shifting instructions are indicated on blue areas of the dash. Miles per hour shown on curves or recommended curve speeds. Squealing tire sound indicates pending crash. <laughs> we might be hearing that sound quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if the emulator is emulating it right, but the attract mode has no sound. And I know in the future, attract mode, they, they try to crank up the volume so you come over to the game. I, I find it hard to believe that arcade cabinets back then didn't make any sound on the attract mode. So I don't know if it's doing that correctly or not, but let's see what happens when I put some money in. Let's put a coin in. <laughs> a little guy comes across the screen. Go! Okay, we, we got our driving. Okay, we're going, we're going, yeah. And we got our steering wheel to turn. Uh oh, I think I'm going too fast, there we go. So I have a, a pedal that I'm putting, pushing down to accelerate, and then I'm using the wheel to turn on the curve. The only thing the game is doing for us is uh, or, or the only thing the computer's doing is the uh, little pylons to simulate like we're driving. The rest of this is coming from the arcade cabinet. The, the, the car you see, the orange car, and the gear shifter. And a, a lot of it is being handled by the ar arcade cabinet, not the video game. But looks like we're doing all right. How do we shift up? Oh, wait, yeah, now we're in high gear. Uh-oh, now we're going way too fast. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow, yeah, this is freaking fast. <laughs> Boom! You are dead. Okay, so I gotta go to low gear again, switch gears. This would be our first first-person perspective game. I think that we've seen. So we're... It's, it's giving us, us the impression that we're sitting in the car. All right, I'm switching to high gear. Watch out. 
Oh. Okay, I switched back to low. It's too fast. Okay, going to high gear. Yeah, it shows my speed down there. The speedometer. Oh my gosh, it's so fast. Zap! <laughs> Alright, switch to low. Ooh, congratulations. You've set a new record. Your rating is one to five. Three Hot Wheels. That's pretty fun. I'm wondering if they had a sit-down version of that cabinet. All right. Out. Okay, so that one's pretty good. We're going for four stars on that. I, uh, well, actually, this game is not only a good game, fun game, uh, the inspiration of having a driving game. Every, every driving game we've seen up to this point was top-down. This is the very first driving game we've had from this perspective. So we're going to go four and a half. That's uh, that's pretty good. All right, now let's move on to Tank 8. If you thought Tank was fun, Tank 8 is eight times more fun. We're in 1976, playing every video game in order of release. This is Tank 8. Let's check out the artwork for Tank 8. And 8, wow, look at the arcade cabinet. 8 means 8 people. They just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. It's 1976. They're already having eight-player arcade games. So cool. So the controls work where you have two joysticks and you, you're doing the treads, pretending it's the treads of the tank that's uh, down there on the screen. So yeah, this is eight players. Wow. There's an example of the arcade board. And uh, uh, controls are pretty simple. You just do the left tread and right tread, and then you have just one fire to shoot. And uh, there we go. There's the example of the, the play field. So you're looking at it from the top down. You have all eight people that are down here and uh, are on, on the play, uh, getting to control the tank. And then you move the tank around and shoot uh, other people. Great idea. And you can see it's uh, able to be flipped back and forth because it's the cocktail view. All right, let's see if the manual has anything for us. Tank 8, Operation Service Manual from Atari, 1976. Let's get a physical description. We'll pass through that because that just talks about the arcade cabinet. But description of play. In Tank 8, game players try to shoot the opponent tanks while at the same time maneuvering their own tanks to avoid shells being fired at them. Players also have to contend with various stationary obstacles dispersed around the battlefield. Obstacles include wall barriers, mines, and derelict broken tanks. A hit made to an opponent adds one point to a player's score. Or frag, if you will. It wasn't called that then. Each player accumulates score is displayed continuously on the TV screen, and the highest score flashes continuously. Upon depositing a coin, the game responds by producing a bugle call and showing the words, 10 seconds to game time. Other players can then join by depositing their coins, and if desired, team play can also be selected at this time. Team play? That's awesome. Play begins 10 seconds after start of the bugle call. Tank controls at the participating player stations are enabled, and those tanks can move, each starting out from its own home position. Each player's left lever controls movement of the tank's left tread, and the right lever controls the right tread. Tanks can be made to go backwards, forwards, or turn, but there's only one speed, so you can't go any faster. Shells travel in straight lines and explode when they hit an object or explode by themselves, having traveled a specific distance. Game play, the play ends when the game, is uh, the time runs out. Oh, and it plays taps. Burr, burr, burr. And then so you got um, basically the time to get as many points as you can. Pretty cool. All right, so just picture this. We're back in 1976. That description of how you play the game is all new. The, the tank came out and, and established this uh, idea of you know the the controls that move each tread and then you shoot from the tank um but this is taking it where you're playing with so many people you can even have team play uh so let's see we got oh we got different sets of the versions for this one but we're going to start with the, the 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 normal play and see what happens so we're in september 1976 this is tank eight on the arcade and it works we're playing tank eight from Atari. Let's see what happens when we put money in. Man, the attract mode looks chaotic. Playing with eight people must be so fun, though. I'm trying to see 
if they're destroying the wall. No, okay, the walls are not destructible. They, they show a little explosion, but they, they're, they're still there. Okay, let's put some money in. And then uh, because we put the coin in, it's saying 10 seconds uh, to gameplay. And it's going to start the countdown. There we go. So now I'm in control of the red tank on the right side. And it looks like I have... Okay, it looks like I only have control of one joystick right now. Okay, there's the other joystick. So I have, uh, there's the other, I, so I found both joysticks so I can make it go forward or backward or turn. And then that's gotta be a mine. Let's run over it and see. <laughs> Boom! Now the, the game has no artificial intelligence, so I have to have eight other people to play with me, or whoever wants to play. But it has a timer that's playing in the game right now. And um, let's make the turn, there we go. So the, um, the once the time runs out, whoever has the highest score wins. But I wanna shoot somebody there. Oh, if they don't put money in, you can't even shoot them or get points for them. That means that if you can't play this game by yourself, you have to play with other people because if they're not active, then uh, they, they can't. Um, then you can't get scored for it. So the full experience is when you have a lot of people, almost like a party game. That's pretty good. I I, I dig it. Tank Eight is is pretty good. We're gonna give this one, yeah, the the four star rating for Tank. Love it. All right, so we're still in 1976. Uh, this is this is where we'll stop for today on Commotion from 1976. So we'll, we'll catch you next time. Thanks so much for joining, and thanks for thanks for hanging out with me. Me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox and RetroArch. Maybe you know what it's going to be next. I don't know what's going to be next, but either way, we'll see you next time as we play every single video game chronologically.